Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to today's weekly market analysis, the 20th of March and Monday. All right, so uh, before we do get started, just please understand that any advice in today's session is of a general nature only and that your personal circumstances have not been taken into consideration. At any stage, if you do have any questions, off topic, whatever they may be, please use this time to type those away and I will do my best to answer them as we go through uh, the session. Okay, all right, so let us kick off with what's happened, happening, hot things to look out for and all news announcements that will be occurring this particular week. So I'm showing them up on my screen right now. I'll leave it there for you to digest. All the times that you are looking at are in my local time, which is Sydney time or Australian Eastern Standard Daylight Savings Time. If we have a look, let's uh, go through the currencies. Let's just see what's the, the most impacting uh, things that happened last week. The biggest thing was the interest rate rise in the US. So if we had an interest rate rise, why did the US dollar lose strength? It's the strangest thing that's occurred in a long, long time. And the reality behind that is basically what investors were looking for was more to see what may follow. I think the interest rate rise was so, such a given that you know everybody was thinking it was already going to happen. So much of much more importance was the steps after the the rate uh, the rise itself. And pretty much Miss Yellen didn't was not hawkish enough in her tone and in the words of choice. And instantly investors chose to bail out of positions. Okay, and essentially what happened was the US dollar lost ground against most of the major currencies. At the moment, the US dollar leading into this week, it's got a very light week. Really, there is not much uh, data at all. This particular week is light pretty much for all currencies. The only thing that we have is the unemployment claims. So the more impacting uh, news that we're going to have this week for the US dollar is we've got a few of the Federal Reserve as, uh, members that will be speaking. The most notable will be Miss Yellen herself on uh, Thursday evening, 11.45, my local time. And I believe this uh, Mr. Evans is speaking tonight, I think, or, or overnight. So these are secondary. They're, they're not major impacting, but these are the, the most impacting news from the US dollar. The big question for the US dollar right now is, do we buy the dips or do we sell the rallies? In other words, the market really hasn't made up its mind as to what may happen, may not happen. So what we're looking for this particular week from all these speakers is, let's see if they remind us about further interest rate rises later in the year. Remember before this one, they were all talking about three interest rates and a cycle of tightening. So let's see what we're looking, investors will be mainly looking for is to see if they remind us of that and they deliver a little bit of a positive note, then yes, the US dollar can take off again and continue to rise. Alternatively, it could be the op perhaps opportunities to sell on those rallies. Okay, so that's the US dollar. Yeah, moving along, the GBP. GBP last week, we, we had it down as our most impacting news, uh, sorry, currency, and it didn't disappoint. GBP USD was the one that moved the most. It had lots and lots of things happening. Uh, this week, it, the GBP itself is kind of like on a high alert, probably over the next two weeks. At any given moment, we could expect over the next two weeks for the announcement to just happen very, very quickly. Article 50 goes into effect. Now, as soon as that happens, the reality of a Brexit situation will, will kick in and we could see British pound lose strength very, very quickly. Okay, so this one, uh, we don't know. There's no set date, time. It's uh, when they announce it. Uh, although the data itself from, from uh, England has been good, this uh, Article 50, uh, as soon as it kicks in, it, it's more of a everybody panic kind of situation. Even though everybody's kind of expecting it, I still feel that it's, pros it's, it's going to take a, a little bit of a dive before it recovers um, from that announcement. Okay, so we don't know when it is, uh, and I'm assuming 
of course, like most other analysts, that they want to make this happen very, very quickly, and they will push for it to occur sooner rather than later. Okay. The other factors around that is that uh, the eurozone is basically starting to play hardball with England now, as as it, so to speak. If you want to leave us, well then leave us, get out quickly, and they don't want to negotiate new deals until. Article 50 is basically into place, which basically leaves a lot of the uncertainty up in the air as to what these agreements are going to be between England and the Eurozone. And that's one of the major reasons that there could be a, a, a quick fall at, uh, as soon as Article 50 is invoked. While we're in the same zone on the Euro side, we were a little bit surprised last week when um, all of a sudden on the Euro front they were talking about the need to possibly tighten policy, uh, monetary policies, sooner rather than later, whereas all we've seen for the last couple of years is um, more easing, 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 and let's just get out of it, uh, whereas now all of a sudden we're starting to go the other way. So it did cause a bit of a movement in the Euro and we did get a, a little bit of a support and, and, and a bit of a kick along. At the moment, I believe that the euro is very susceptible to headline type situations. What I mean by that is a, a, an impact in headline could spook the market, move it in one direction, but it's not data or fundamental based. Okay, so that's on the euro. The hottest news or the most impacting news that I feel that's going to happen next week, purely data related, is possibly going to be on the Kiwi. We have uh, Kiwi uh, New Zealand will be announcing their official cash rate, although nobody is thinking that they will move on cash rates, that statement becomes ever more important. Now the reality is that dairy prices have been down, uh, manufacturing has been a little bit on the up, but in general it's, it's more gloom, more doom and gloom than, than bright side, so I believe that possibly the announcement, they may try and talk down their currency. Okay, so it's going to be interesting to see if that double bottom is going to really hold out on on the Kiwi dollar. So I believe there's a trade that I had that I you know, that I really wanted to kick in, but at the moment it looks like I may just get bumped out and not trigger at all. So it's I would really ideally like to be in it to ride this announcement out because I feel it's going to be. Uh, something on the downside, okay? That doesn't mean that just because I think that, we trade it, remember we only trade what we see, so we'll look for the opportunities. And finally, on our Aussie dollar front, we've virtually got not much, we got the meetings, uh, the monetary meeting minutes, which are due out tomorrow. Uh, things have been kind of nice on, on the Aussie front, so it'll be interesting to see what they say there, but that's pretty much all we have on the news front. I believe, based on everything that I've just said, possibly the Kiwi dollar, New Zealand, USD, is going to be the one that is impacted the most based on, based on uh, data alone. Okay, so that's the wrap there. Um, any questions, please type them in. I see some questions coming through, so you'll have to give me a bit of time to read. Uh, let me bring up my trading platform, I'll read these questions and I'll start straight away. Okay, one moment. Okay, there's a question on Aussie dollar, so uh, Aussie dollar straight off the bat, so I should be able to answer this one straight away. Okay. All right, let's have a look. What do we have on the Aussie dollar? Really, really tricky. Like there's a a rough zone throughout here. It's it's uh, you can see that I'm just drawing it in there. It's not perfect. The roughly through there, I'm catching it's a, a resistance zone. Let me zoom in. So if I'm looking for some kind of resistance zone, which I'm catching, oops, let me change colors. I'm catching points there, there, there. You can see there's a few times that we've reached there. We're coming up to it again right now, okay? So 
the type of trade that I would be looking for, one of the questions that is being asked, give me one second, let me just read it out so everybody understands it a bit better. So Aussie dollar showing an engulfing candle, but also looks to me as we're reaching resistance. Would you both uh, options buy or sell? Okay, all right. So the question is, what do we do? Pretty much right here. What do we think, guys? What's more likely? I uh, to for me to become a buyer. For me to become a buyer here, I need to see one thing, and there's only one thing that will make my mind up to buy. And it wouldn't be from this current level, but the current candle, if this candle finished like this, then tomorrow I would be happy to buy. Okay, and this would be considered a breakout buy. Now, we're not, I, I, I've chosen not to do breakout buys in the trading challenge, but this would be a breakout buy. It takes a lot of confidence to take this kind of trade because um, it's, it's moved Effectively, it would have already moved this much distance before you get to your entry point, but nevertheless, this would be a breakout buy. That's the only candle that I would consider becoming a buyer, okay? I'm actually would be more interested to see, the, let me zoom in a bit more so we can all see it a bit better, but I would be more interested in seeing this candle give me something like that, let's say, and then tomorrow's candle inside it like that, and then I'd be more interested in that type of trade like that because this level, as I've shown you, is a very, very resistive level. Does that make sense to everybody? That's that's my my highest probability type trade that I could possibly see on the Aussie dollar. All right, come on a moment because I've got a few questions. Okay, there's a couple of questions that have been asked specifically about price action trading. What I suggest is just go back and watch the video because it'll take me like a long time to answer that particular question. The color of the, the, the I talk about the color of the candles and, and specifically, but if you can go back, if you don't know where it is, send me a, a separate email and I will send I will point you to the video. Okay, um, hopefully that helps. Question, another question, how many times can we modify an existing order? Uh, like physically, you can modify as, as, as many times as you want. Uh, Carlos, the, now, a reason to modify it, I'm gonna, when I get to the New Zealand dollar, I'll show you, I've had to modify one, and, uh, and I'll show you the reasoning behind it, okay? But the, the reality is you can modify it as many times as you want, okay? All right, so Aussie dollar, we have our game plan. We just got to wait, all right? So we are at a critical zone, so to speak. So let's see what happens. Right now, there's no trade on, but we are very, very close. Euro USD. Okay, Euro USD. I drew this top blue line last week because I felt that the market may come to me. It's not quite there. There's a little bit of gap there, but we're very, very close. So what I'm feeling here is exactly the same as the Aussie dollar, but let me just zoom out a bit. Let me just have a quick look. But this one, if I get this kind of candle like that, this one would be a better buy than the Aussie dollar. I don't know why, maybe it's just psychologically, because there's a lot of activity up there, it comes down, hits this, and then just continues to go back up. So if we get the big bull breaking candle, must close above very, very little kind of uh, wick, and you get a little dot there, then your next star on the next candle. Okay, so that would be the the best trade or the highest probability based on this particular chart. Alternatively, if we do get some kind of resistance and we, in this area, look for this trade as well, okay? So look for an inside candle, uh, look for a, 
an engulfing candle, let's see what, what shows, and we may get an opportunity to go in either direction. All right, if I see it, of course, I, I, I always try and push them out so that everybody can, can practice in watching these trades and, and getting a little bit more experience as to what to look for. Okay, so that's the Euro USD. Questions asking, what about the RBA for the Aussie USD tomorrow? RBA announcements once a month on the first Tuesday of the month. Tomorrow there's no RBA, it's simply uh, the minutes, okay, which I just spoke about a little while ago. We're just looking to see the tone of what they say, just to reinforce about what their views are on, on the current policy. Okay, Alan's asking me, what about right now? Do I have an inside candle? Well, uh, not quite, Alan. This candle is still not finished yet. This is why I'm not talking about it. If it was to finish where we are right now, what you're saying is that this candle is bigger than this one. Can we trade it in this direction? Look, it's... Yes, I would prefer, I don't know why, I just want this to go up a little bit higher, but technically, yes, you're correct. But in, in either case, I don't have to make that decision right now because this one's not finished. So that, that makes me comfortable. I'll finish, uh, when, when this candle finishes, I'll make the decision. Okay, all clear on that one? Okay, there's heaps of questions coming through, so just bear with me. I, it actually, I, I do like it. It's better for me. It just means it just takes me a little bit longer to read them. Euro USD 38 Fib level. What's the question? Question is, can this be pushed down to the 38 2 level? Um, I don't, whether it can or not, it doesn't really affect what we're looking for. The, when, when I look at this particular chart, the most critical part is that we are very, very close to this top line. And this top line is definitely defined because we've got one, two, and we're at a third position here. So I'm only interested in to see if I form a price action reversal pattern, which will allow me to trade in this direction, or if I get a breaking pattern, which will allow me to trade in this direction. So those are the two things that I'm looking for. Okay, so at the, the relevance of a Fibonacci level right now, it, it, there is, I don't see the relevance in it, so I, I would just ignore it, is what I'm trying to say. Okay? Okay, let's move along. GBP USD. Okay, GBP USD again. Very, very clear, defined trading region. I've just drawn in the lines. And now notice, what I would like you to do as you develop yourself as a trader, and keep your lines on your charts because it's very easy to come back and continue on from where you were analyzing. You know what you're looking for, and it just makes it a lot easier. Okay? And we're right in the middle. Right in the middle. Okay, so the distance there, distance here is, it's right in the middle. So, Really, I'm not interested in any GBP trade right now. What's going to be interesting, if Article 50 does get invoked this week, it would be interesting to see how far we can break down, okay? Because I believe also that what will help it trigger a long down is there's probably a lot of orders already starting to build up in this area. Uh, because we've we've come down here before, we've come down, come down, we've tested it. I believe there's a lot of orders down here. If Article 50 triggers a little momentum in this direction and then starts to trip these orders like dominoes, it could easily just go down uh, some some further. What level? I don't know. Let me just measure. What's this? If we, so that's like 500 pips. That could happen easily. Okay, so let's, uh, what would make it worse is if we trickle down naturally and we're in this area here when it triggers, then it could really give it a good bump down. 
Okay, so either way, that's something that's virtually untradeable because we're that's pure speculation. So we're not trading speculation. We're trying to see if we if we physically have something. So unfortunately, right now, I would love us to find a selling opportunity, but there is none. So I, this week, GBP USD, I don't have anything for you right now, and we're not even close because we're right in the middle of a trading range. Gold. Okay, I just started to pick up this uh, channel, so it's it's the first time we've got the one and the two at the bottom, and we've got one, two, and three at the top. So we the ranges are set. Effectively now, what I'm looking for is because again I'm kind of in the middle. I would probably expect to come up to here before I can look for my my sell opportunity. Okay, and of course, when we get back to the lines, we'll be looking for buys, and we can see if we can ride this channel a little bit, we might be able to get a couple of trades out of it. Uh, where we currently are sitting right now, if I zoom in, you can see that there's really nothing there for us, so we just got to monitor it, and let's just see if it, if it can play out a little bit. Okay, so it's it's looking really smooth to be honest. All these candles are almost like one color, then change and change. It's it's quite a smooth looking chart at the moment, which is a little bit. I don't know. I just haven't seen a chart this smooth for a little while. So um, either way, let's trade the channel. Let's see what pops up at us. Okay, so that's gold. Moving it along, let's have a look at the US yen again the US yen is trading in a tight range what's this range this is a it's a 300 pip range but it is tight uh, it is coming down so there could be an opportunity shortly here we are not there yet and again what we're going to be looking for is a very simple reversal pattern to try and trade right back up alternatively it's already come once, twice, this would be the third time it could break down. So don't discard the big breaking candle in the downward direction. All right. Uh, let me have a quick look at a four hour chart, see if anything looks extra special. There's a channel on a four hour chart, but it's. Uh, it's not as good. I'll show it to you, I'm pretty sure. No, there's not. Let's see if I can make it fit. No, there isn't. Okay, that I feel better that there isn't. Okay, so let's leave it as it is. We can clearly see what we're trying to track there. The US Yen in a tight range nothing to do, let's wait to see what happens at that 111.75 area, see if we can uh, get another pullback or if we, if we finally get a break through the level and, and start off another type of trade, okay? The, there's, there's signs that we, after this particular candle, there's signs that this could, if this candle finishes, say here, like this, the CCI is already low. The moving average is just crossing. If you trade in T-Chaser, that's, that's probably an entry for you for tomorrow if this candle finishes something like this. Okay, I've got the wrong uh, template on my chart, but but I, I believe that it would it would possibly trigger. Okay, so keep if you're a T chaser trader, put this one on your chart USCN. All right, let's move along to the Euro Yen. Okay, Euro Yen. Ah, we triggered our first trading challenge trade with the Euro Yen and we got stopped out. Isn't that wonderful? Um, 
I've received so many emails about it and instantly the first thing that I thought what wow like you know we're all so excited we wait it so long we take our first trade and we lose and I could smell the fear in the air so who got stopped out can I just get a show of hands did anybody take it who got stopped out I did Okay, well done. Everybody got stopped out. Well, well done for taking the trade correctly. It's unlucky that we stopped out, but look, trust me, if we let the numbers do what the numbers will do, it should play out in the end. Okay, so don't panic. Uh, just the, the trade was correct. It was correct. It's the the of the three types of trades that I like. It's probably the this is the type 3 the one that I like the least it's trend and always the first trend reversal can sometimes bite you in the butt but there's got to be a decision to be made tomorrow tomorrow we could get an inside candle again and the question is do you take it again or do we walk away from it that's going to be tough okay some of you may not have addressed that in your trading plans there's only one thing that will save you from from saying I'm not going to take it again and I'm not going to tell you what it is until it happens and then uh, you can email me about it and I will tell you some of you will realize already what it will be but uh, let's just let's just see what this candle right now if it finishes if this candle finishes let's say here like that you will have another inside candle situation and another decision to make whether you take that trade based on the same identical reason that we took these two okay so there you have it it's put in everybody's uh, it's going to really test you already and this is part of trading some of you didn't take this first trade for whatever reason you didn't take it I don't know what your reason was but if you were trading the correct and uh, the price action trading method you should have been in this trade if you're trading a different method that's understandable uh, you know then it may not have met your criteria okay all right so what do we do you are yet let's wait for the current candle and let's see if we have a dilemma tomorrow question being asked is the bear candle engulfing one yeah this bear candle right now is an engulfing candle uh, Maurizio uh, I think that Marcio this Yes, this the red candle is engulfing this one. Okay, but that doesn't necessarily mean that, that that's a sell signal. Okay, it, it is an engulfing candle, but the trend is still up, so you, you can't look for a sell and you're not at a resistance point or anything like that. So there's no reason to sell, but the candle itself, yes, it is a bear engulfing candle but it's not a trade is what I'm trying to say okay hopefully that uh, makes sense to you all right okay so let's see what happens let's see what happens tomorrow Kiwi dollar all right somebody asked me earlier how many times can I modify an order or, or can I modify the order more than one times the answer is as many times as you want okay now I'll show you how to do it just in case if it's a, a functionality uh, question that you have so you can clearly see on my chart that I've got an order there you can see my this is my trigger line okay there there's my stop this is one of my targets I've actually got two orders in the market there's an there's a second one down here so if I want to modify the order, there's a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, so I don't know if it's a functional question that you're asking or not, but just in case, I'll, I'll explain either way. I can physically grab the line and move it wherever I like. Okay, see like up and down. So if I move it down here somewhere, then I will get a little window that pops up to me that says modify it. If I click modify it, it will literally, I've just modified the order. Okay, so that's physically how I do it. Now, in this particular case, we broke the top candle, so I have to go and cancel this order now. 
So let me do that before I forget. So let me cancel this order and cancel this order. Okay, so I've done it. Now I did promise everybody that I was going to make a video. And uh, look, I was away. I went. I went to Canberra over the weekend, so I have not been in front of a computer all weekend. So I apologise, but I do promise you this: I will make that video tonight, um, which will show you how the order will cancel out automatically, and how the order can also exit out automatically in one and two steps. It'll be about a three, four minute video. So I will make that tonight, and I will add it to module six so that you can see it probably from tonight. Some t actually, as soon as I post it up, it'll come out as a Twitter message, so you will see that I've added this video in, and I'll also put it in Module 6 so that you can access it. Okay, so apologies, I didn't get to do it over the weekend. I will do it tonight. All right, so where does that leave us now with the Kiwi dollar? Well, it leaves us in a situation that I'm still possibly looking for another entry to go down. The only drama now is that this I need this candle to go higher than this one, something like that, then give me another one like this, and then do this. The fractal will be over there. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for. It just means I've got to wait for more candles now. So that's what I'm, I'm specifically looking for, otherwise I've got nothing. Let me have a quick look, I think I just saw something else, one moment. No, nothing. So that's our plan for the Kiwi dollar. All right, so we understand that. We're still looking for a sell, I just don't have one right now. So. And for a buy, I'm not interested in finding a buy until we get down here. At this level, then I'm interested in a buy, okay? Okay, US CAD. Okay. This movement was, I was looking for that, but I didn't get the candle setups over here that I needed. I'm not going to get it out of these two. Nothing here, guys, on this one. This was a really good level, we didn't quite reach it. I'm just going to mark out another region. Hang on, I think, let me just check something. No, there's nothing there. Okay, the best I can do is I've just highlighted these these regions just to to see what happens there. Uh, I need to wait for this to move towards one or the other. Wait, there might be something here. I'm really trying to find something for us. Give me one second. Okay, here we go. We're going to a four-hour chart. This is the best I can give you. Move it into a four hour chart. I've got one, two up there. I've got a couple of touches here. You can see these parallel lines. The channel that I'm tracking right there. You, If it does come down, breaks down to here, over here you can look for this type of trade. But this is, in, I've gone into a four hour chart to find it, okay? So, and that may be, actually it's a nice level, it's just breaking be, below the 132, so it's about 131.80ish or something like that, okay? So that's the best I can find for you.
I'll leave those on my chart, but I'll go back to a daily as well. So I'm looking at two things. I'm interested in these hot regions here, but now I'm also looking at that channel there as well. Okay. Someone's telling me the 132.70 is a hot level. Where is it? 132.70. Look, I can see these levels here, but the, I just got no reason to be in this trade. That's the only the thing that's turning me off. So I, I'm trying to find a solid support or a solid resistance or try to trade off a really nice shape. So until I can do that, I'm reluctant to just uh, jump at the trade. Okay, all right, let's have a look at oil. Okay, I drew this line in last week. Oh, look at that. I haven't gone back to oil since last week. It's a weird looking engulfing right there to shoot it into this direction. It's pushed forward to a certain amount and now it's coming back to about the same level. So if anybody is interested in this, I wonder if the line can hold and this is going to can just turn around on you or will it just uh, break break through that line. But uh, that's yeah, WTI. This must have happened on Wednesday or Thursday and uh, I didn't I, – I drew it, but I just didn't come back and check on it. So it is an engulfing. Okay, it's an engulfing candle, not your traditional looking. It's engulfing. The wicks are engulfing. Um, the the big wick down the bottom generally indicates that the markets try to push through, but there was just way too much buyers that just brought it back up the other way. The candle that followed, which normally I would have expected this to bump up quicker but it hasn't so let's see what happens so if anybody's interested you can pro you can possibly jump in on this at, at a at a better price than it would have back then the stop would the reasoning would still be the same um, and your stop would be below the the wick down here okay if you do trade oil just remember oil is different to currencies so the site just make sure that you you're, you got your sizes correct maybe do a quick demo trade on oil just so that you can understand how big and how small it should be. Okay, any questions? I'll just go back and review what I've just covered. If you do have a question, please type it in. Okay, Aussie dollar, we're coming close to this resistance level. Let's see if we can possibly get a, a reversal uh, trade off that. Euro USD, again, we're in a try in this range. Let's see what happens up, up at this resistance level, similar to the Aussie dollar. GBP, we're right in the middle of a range. We're not doing anything. Gold, we just spotted this, possibly the start of a of a new channel, but we're in the middle. Let's see what happens. US yen, we're in a tight trading range also. Let's see what happens at the bottom. So we've got a lot of patterns that are developing. Um, Euro yen, we may have to make a decision tomorrow, depending on the current candle, to see if it remains an inside candle or if it breaks out. Kiwi dollar, we've just broken up, we've cancelled pending orders, so we need to wait for a new formation to set. US CAD in the middle of a channel and a zone, do nothing. WTI, there is a trade there. For anybody who's interested, um, it did get triggered last week, but you're pretty much getting it at the same level and it hasn't kicked kicked far enough to hit T1 just yet. Any questions before we wrap up? I will bring back up the major news announcements for this week. It's a light week. There is not much. The New Zealand USD is the currency that's poss possibly going to be the most under the spotlight due to data, um, but that's about it. All right, if there's no final questions, uh, I will wrap up today's session. I will make that video tonight and I will post it up so that you can completely set the trade and it will trigger or, or cancel out if, if what we don't want to happen occurs and it will also step you out 
automatically in two parts at whatever levels you wanted to set. So I will make that video tonight. Apologies, I couldn't do it over the weekend. And if you do have any questions, please email me. I've received plenty of your trading plans. Apologies, I haven't uh, had a chance to go through them yet, but I will this week. So I, if you've sent it to me, I have received it. I will get back to you shortly. Okay, have a great trading week. Any questions, as always, please email me. And I will speak to you next week, or possibly you'll hear me on the daily call throughout the week. Bye for now.